You know that feeling when you're just sitting there avoiding something? You know you need to do it, but you just can't bring yourself to start. You stare at it, and it stares right back at you. It's just gonna be there waiting. Yet, you just keep making up excuses. I checked off most of the tasks for today. Therefore, I naturally deserve a break. Wait, bro. Don't overthink it. I'll do it tomorrow with a hot cup of coffee. Cause you know I'll be more energized. Wait, but what if I use that time to do something more productive instead? Yeah, that makes more sense, right? Wait, but I also need some time where I'm not productive. For the sake of my mental health, you know? Yeah, but what about the deadline? You know, we can always extend the deadline. They can wait. Wait, but I'm running out of money. Who's gonna fund me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can ask my parents. My parents are broke. I'm broke too. Fuck. Sadly, no matter how much you lie to yourself, it can see right through you. Don't get me wrong, I don't mind UI design. But somehow my body refuses to activate the satisfaction neurons in my brain. No matter how many times I rework my designs, they just never click. Should I push this to the right? Should I push it to the left? Is it gonna be this color or that color? What about this negative space? Should it be a little smaller or bigger? How about the phone? How about the overall design? It's funny because having no restrictions is restricting me, which leave me no option other than sticking to something and assigning an accountability partner. And that's where you, my friend, come into play. So without further ado, this is Sword Islands. Wait, what episode was this again? This is episode 8. Hey everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Sword Islands. Uh, just like always, it's been a while. I was experimenting with a plugin called MapMagic 2. It can uh, procedurally generate uh, Unity terrain using nodes and noise. I'm not sure still if, if, if like having cliffs and rocks like this or having more of uh, flat areas like this for the gameplay, it, which one is exactly better. So maybe type in the comment. Maybe we can do both actually. Like flat areas for gameplay where you do the fighting and then while you explore you go through this like rocky environment after all it's uh, it's an island so i'm assuming it's not gonna be entirely flat but that's beside the point today's video is actually about the almost semi-finished menu <laughs> so you'll still encounter some placeholder data here and there but that's just to showcase how it will fully look so to open the menu you basically swipe from right to left just like this while holding the grab button of course you can see the menu is kind of split into two sections. So we got here the buttons that change the main panel. And then we got buttons here on the right as well to change the sub panels. So right here we have the status or stats panel. You can see your attributes. Uh, we talked about these in previous episodes. We have vigor, focus, resistance, agility, strength, dexterity, talent, and aura. And you can see here on the right each stat what it... Uh, what it do technically, so Vigor will affect health, Focus will affect mana, etc, etc. Uh, you can also see that the design of the menu has this uh, glassy look kinda. It's not entirely solid, so if I put my hand back here, you can kinda see that the menu is kinda see-through, but it has this blurry effect. It's exactly like glass. That was inspired by uh, the other jobs I do. I sometimes make websites and programs and stuff, and this technique is commonly used in web development, so I was like, this might actually do well in games. And here we are. So yeah, this is your basic stats panel. Over here we got the map. Don't mind the texture, it's just a placeholder for an old island I was playing around with, so it's not an actual map. Uh, you can zoom in, you can zoom out. If you zoom in, you can scroll around. You can zoom in extra level, I think three levels. And you can just move around and in the future there will be like probably uh, points where you can click on and travel to. That's already implemented, but right now, again, this, this map by itself is a placeholder. This panel specifically was designed by 
Uh, my boy Ickles, so shout out to him. He designed the scrolling functionality, so that's kind of cool. Now moving on to the next panel. Uh, this is the equipment panel. So if I click on the sheath, you can see I can select which sword I want. And they are separated into sections. We got stray swords, katanas, great swords, uh, curved ones and daggers and others. This should give you an idea of uh, how the whole thing works. So let's select this sword right now. That's the straight sword, the rising blade. You can see now, because I selected the sword, I can see the details, the ranking, it's a common item, the, the, the description that I just made up, I think. This sword is made out of the bones found in the graveyard. Uh, we got the attributes requirements. Some swords will have attribute requirements. For example, you can't wield the sword until you have X amount of strength or X amount of dexterity. The scaling attribute, that's basically one of the attributes in here, if you level it up, uh, the sword will kind of gain more attack points. You got sharpness, that's like kind of durability thing and critical chance. Uh, over here we got the shield. Right now I have this one shield for the demo. So uh, it's, it works in the same way as the sword. You can also switch it and stuff. And then the third and the probably most important panel is the blade arts panel. As you can see we have four different slots. And we have a little uh, a diagram here or a guide picture, whatever you want to call it. But before getting into that, you can see here that we have a required affinity and it's Earth and Flame. And that's limited by the sword. This sword only supports Earth and Flame or only uh, compatible with Earth and Flame. So uh, if you go to here and you want to assign Blade Arts, the Blade Arts should be of the type Earth or Flame. Uh, so yeah, let's explain the slots a little bit. As you can see, when I click on one of them, one of these diamonds lit up. And that's to guide you through where to point your sword to activate that specific skill. So let me demonstrate an example. If I click on here, it's the one in the center. Uh, over here, you can choose which affinity you want. And uh, for example, I, ha I, I want the earth one. So I select this one. And now I close the menu. You can see in the HUD here, we have also a new element that demonstrate the equipped uh, blade arts. So now I have the ground pound or the ground smash, I forgot what I call this blade art, over here. And to activate it, as you saw here, we have it in the center, so almost the chest area. So You equip your blade, you put it in front of you, and you charge it. Because that's kind of where the hitbox is. And now it's charged. Activate. You can see now I equipped another one here, it's on top of your head, so that means if you close the uh, menu, oh, hi butterfly, and you pull up the sword, if you put the sword on top of your head and you click the charging button, now the second blade out is charged. And you can also activate it. So yeah, that's basically how selecting the blade art works. Uh, so if you equip one here, you have to hold the sword to your right. If you equip one here, you have to, s to hold the sword to your left. And that's how you select the blade art. You can also see that the details of the blade art are changing the moment I click on another one. And uh, it w it's just to show you like the rarity, required mana, and... and you can see in the usage guide I have test, but that's just the placeholder text. It's supposed to tell you stab the ground to activate the blade art. Hey everyone, this is that part of the video where I remind you to wishlist the game on Steam and click that notify me button on Kickstarter and that will help to fund the project when the campaign is fully live. Thank you all for watching and don't forget to leave a comment as well. Well, moving on to the next one, which is the inventory. Now, the inventory is really simple. It's nothing complex. So you can scroll up and down and you can see the slots of the items that you have. The items will stack until 99 and then they will uh, acquire a new slot. So let's say I click on this green apple. As every other item, it has a uh, rarity. And then we got the benefits, for example, health, mana, other enhancement or buffs and data worth, so in case you sell the item, how much uh, data it will actually produce to you. you can, uh, for example, this one has 25 data worth, I didn't fill the other ones. So yeah, uh, you also got two buttons, one to delete it from your inventory and one to drop it. So let's click on the drop. You can now catch it and you can eat. And I gain 10 HP. That's it for the inventory. There will probably also for the multiplayer be another button where you press it and you can trade items with your friends, but, but that will happen when the multiplayer as a whole is implemented. And that leads me to the next step, which is multiplayer. 
this is the network tab. You'll be able to add uh, people to the lobby, remove people from the lobby, send invitations, uh, check the status, etc. etc. And now, because I don't have the multiplayer, so it says that you are currently in offline mode, which makes sense. Next tab is the settings. I split it into three categories, so the gameplay or the character settings. The second one is the uh, graphics, and the third one is just overall settings. So as you can see, I have like uh, now right now a lot of dot 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 lines, and that's because uh, they need to be filled with other settings. But I will do that in the full game. Uh, one big example is like rendering distance, graphic quality, and stuff like that. I will definitely have to implement that. I, I was, I'm also planning to add a lot of accessibility settings, like switching things, uh, switching things around to match your playing style. But for now, I have the primary settings, things like movement, which direction you move into, uh, the default dash direction, that's when you press the dash button, doesn't take you forward or backward, you can choose that. Uh, stuff like that, rotation, you know, you're snapping, you're smoothing. <laughs> Uh, height settings so you can play seated or uh, standing and hand settings to switch your primary hand you can oh sweet speaking fans you can see that when I drag my hand to the menu it kind of take this pose to help you click on buttons so that's kind of cool as well and uh, of course audio volumes you gotta have that and a menu scale so this one can change the size of the menu you can make it large make it medium or leave it on medium for now with that, there is only one more thing left, which is the logout screen. It will calculate the, your current level, the time played in the full game, percentage finished, of course. And maybe the calories burned this session. I was planning to add like a calories calculator where you can add your weight in the settings. And then over here, it will calculate how much calories you burned this session. And a button to exit the demo. But that will also be replaced with like uh, different buttons in the full game. Probably a logout button that doesn't work out. Haha, <laughs> get it. Uh, but yeah, that's about it for the menu. Uh, leave a comment. What do you think about it? Do you think it's, it's 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 cool? Does it do the job? Is there any things I can add or things that I can remove? Uh, again, I try to keep it simple. I know that there's a lot of things that could be way better. For example, regarding the inventory and stuff. But I wanted something that just does the job and it looks awesome. In my opinion, it's it's really cool because most other games also don't really like this interactability with the fingers thing. So they they really like laser pointers, and I'm not, I I don't mind laser pointers. I just think that VR wasn't meant to have that exactly. It was ha it was meant to kind of have more of interactable UI elements, just like this. At least in the movies, that's what they do. But yeah, regardless, I'm open to listen to your feedback in the comments. So yeah, I hope you like. Thank you.